All right, I'm live. I'm live. We're live. Hey. Anyway, so tonight is, well, I gotta get some stuff out of the way first. Uh, this week has been a, been a tough week. Lucky now I got my, got my kids here with me. This is my oldest, Mimi. And uh, she's gonna help me with the unboxing today of some Kino stuff. Now, for those of you that haven't heard, uh, I talked about my, uh, that my cat wasn't feeling well. And unfortunately, my cat uh, got extremely sick and, uh, and passed away. So uh, I just wanted to get that out of the way for people that have asked about it and people that have sent their, uh, uh, you know, their condolences. Thank you so much. I, uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. It was really hard. And... Uh, I love my kitties that I have with me, and I will miss her a lot. <clears throat> so, we have Kino today. I uh, went through my Kino collection. Oh, you were not here when I did that. But I went through my Kino collection, and Kino does a lot of, like, kind of, like, different type of films. Like, cool stuff, classic stuff, like, action movies, cartoons. Kino pretty much runs the gamut. And uh, they had a sale. They had a huge sale. Their biggest sale that they have ever had. And uh, if you... Uh, Hey Savannah, hey from hey from Australia. See today I've bought movies, so I uh, I have stuff to show you from uh, from another company. Savannah is from Australia, okay, and eighteen and a very very uh, good swimmer. Something I'm not. So uh, I'm afraid of water. So yeah, I just have to ride on a that is my oldest. <laughs> That's my oldest child, actually. That's Mimi. And hopefully a bit of here without the mic. I need to get like a, uh, especially now that I got, I probably have more people. My youngest is actually sleeping right now, or he'd be in the video as well. But uh, we decided we'd, we'd, we'd played enough of like Super Mario Odyssey tonight. We played a lot. You had 15 moons when I came in. We have 97 now. Oh, nice so. to meet you. Oh, hey, okay. thank you. <clears throat> So, Savannah was one of the people that really helped start the whole movie club thing. There's Savannah, Polly, 4K Cinema HD, James, Reality's Illusion was another James. So, we, there's a bunch of, of people. I'm not sure how many of them I'm going to see here tonight, but because uh, it's a Friday night and I usually do this on a Saturday. But I wanted to get this one done. I actually have opened the box already. Hey, guy, yeah. <laughs> I got Arrow's Last House on. Oh, man, that looks so good. I got House on the Edge of the Park because you recommend it. Let me know what you think, House on the Edge of the Park. You've seen it. Uh, yeah. yeah. A, oh, sweet. What, what is that? I have really, I don't have any glasses. Oh, that's awesome. Now, House of the Park is with David Hess. Okay. Uh, that's the one where he, like, the, he rapes, kills this girl at the beginning of the movie, and he goes to this party, and he kind of, like, terrorizes him at the party. There's a kind of a twist at the end. I, let, I vaguely remember it, yeah. Let me know what you think of it, uh, guy, because I really do want to know. Uh, I, that's, a, that's a favorite of mine. And uh, I actually like it better than Last House on the Left, so let me know what your thoughts are. So I got 10 Kinos today, so I'm super excited. I got some horror here, I got some action, I got some animation. I got some of supposedly the toughest guy in the world. So uh, we'll start uh, so We'll start with the animation first, uh, and then we'll go into the, uh, we'll, we'll do the horror last, because I like to leave the, leave the horror for last. So first off is Mr. Ja. And Mr. Ja is kind of like, uh, they actually use the, Use the uh, the Jaws music in some parts of this. I'm really surprised he got away with it. This was actually the uh, part of the Pink Panther show at one point, uh, done by the Pot of Freeling, and uh, we collected a Pot of Freeling stuff. Hey James, yeah, uh, I sent you a message actually. Uh, it was a shock. We did. We, I knew that Smokey was sick. I just didn't expect it to happen that soon. So it's. Uh, I didn't think it was gonna be on, but uh, I'm on. You get through it. The uh, Mr. Ja is uh, is kind of like a, a shark. It's, shar it's it's really cool. Hey, hey, the other James, reality. Uh, so uh, and there's another James too. There's like three Jameses on here, which is awesome. James is such a great name. My best friend in school was named James. You know that. Uh, oh well, uh, she had a she had a heart attack and passed away, unfortunately, due to uh, technicalities with her uh, with cancer that we didn't realize it gotten as bad as it got. There was actually no way that uh, 
she uh, she could be saved. Anyway, but uh, let's move on to movies because yeah. I'm not. Uh, I get a little That's choked out all still. Sappy and stuff, which is sad. It's sad. It's definitely sad. But Bond, movie. James Bond. There we go, James Bond. There we go. Yeah, no, I never got around. It's been hard. It was yesterday, so it's been hard. Now, what's cool about this, and Murdersville, welcome. Uh, Mr. Ja came at a good time, because I just started watch, listening to, and it's a great podcast. I recommend you listen to it, too. Uh, it's called Inside Jaws, and it's done by the, uh, by the Wondery guys. And if you've seen, if you've listened to the podcast Inside Psycho or Inside Exorcist, and you know, kind of know what you're uh, what you're getting with that uh, podcast, and it's really, really good. So if you guys haven't checked it out, I really recommend you check it out. And it's kind of creepy, but there, Mister Jai is not creepy. His catchphrase is "kacha," which is it's kind of cool. I like it. Um, the next one up is the the Dog Father, and of course, you know. Make it kind of make fun of the god of the Godfather. Though some of these here, uh, when I watched a couple of them, they kind of remind me very similar to certain uh, Looney Tunes cartoons that uh, that were done uh, a little bit earlier. So I really do uh, <coughs> dig this one here. Really cool. Uh, again, this is the other one that they never showed on TV except for once, and maybe those were because they were you know they were movie kind of parodies in a way. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Don't blame them. It's beast, you know. Pet them, it's sweet. Next up is uh, actually today. Uh, I, I'm excited to see it. <clears throat> James always like sends me the most interesting packages, so we will open that up live here. How old are you? I'm 23. 23. <laughs> you don't have to tell me anything that comes in Jack. I, like I was supposed to get new glasses months ago, and I don't didn't do it. <laughs> you need new glasses. I need new glasses, but. Takes time to together. Yeah. Water Mathel and Bruce Stern laughing placement. This is one I think you like. This is kind of like the more uh, the grittier type of like uh, '70s cop cop ones. I do uh, I do really like these. Uh, they got because they got kind of the cop film noir type aspect to it. Um, you do like the the step, right? Yeah, yeah. So definitely, we'll check that out. Water Mathel's probably known best for his comedies later years, but he did do a lot of really good serious roles playing like like other cops or bad guys and stuff like that. Next up is one that I'm actually pretty excited about. And it is an early film by Andy Sedaris. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a very long time, then one of the very first videos I ever did was called uh, I think it's uh, Girls, Guns, and G-Strings. That was a uh, it was a set of, uh, of 12 Andy Sedaris films. It was on my uh, highest viewed videos because of the name I'm more than likely not because it was a very good video at the time because I was really it was a really early and it was like maybe two or three minutes long I was, I was doing it the old old apartment wasn't it the old old apartment the was one. the downstairs one in St. John's and uh moved away from St. John's but this is one of his early ones this is at seven with uh William Smith and uh who was legit is a legit badass William Smith could really seriously kick people's asses that was a uh, kind of one thing he was known for and these are like action movies, really cheesy. If you've ever seen any of this stuff, or you've ever seen like the Girl Squad by like uh, by Ted V. Michaels or anything like it's the, that style of style of film. It's like super cheesy, lots of action. Uh, you know, some cute girls. Unfortunately, they can't act or stuff like that. But you know, they're not put there for the acting. Do you collect movies too? I I don't. I collect well. Some movies. I get some movies. I have a collection of my own of a different thing. Uh, uh, yeah, that's true. Which I have here with me now. Which is a, oh, your oh, Power Rangers. Well, and Kamen Rider. It's I have a Tokusatsu collection: Kamen Rider, Power Rangers, Super Sentai. What's your favorite films of all time? What's my favorite films of all time? Uh, that's a hard one because I haven't really thought about it in a long time. I like a lot of things not based off of like how legitimately good they are, but how legitimately like, bad they are. <laughs> well, just like on like a feeling like. One of my favorite seri like film series is horror wise is Puppet Master, and like a majority of those are terrible. But <laughs> Wasn't one I, of your favorite movies of all time? Dolls. Dolls is one of my favorites. Absolutely. Uh, I also like uh, the movie Battle Royale. I like uh, Tag by uh, Sion Sono. Uh, I, I like a lot of Japanese films, and I've watched a lot of, like, Asian horror as well. So, like, those are up on there. Yeah. Particularly, like, 
I don't have enough of those, do I? No, you don't. You don't have a lot of them. Though, like, when I do get some, I do give some to you. I gave you my, most of my garage or ring collection or something Yeah, I have like the that. ring collection. Ring collection. Which is actually in, I think, it's in one of my bags upstairs. Yeah, that's when you should have been your suit. I... Dolls, your favorite Stuart Gordon movie. Me, me too, actually. Dolls is one of my favorite movies, too. I gotta say, that's one that... Dolls is great. <laughs> it's the Charles Band film, so it's got tiny dolls and toys and puppets in it. I'm, I'm shocked. Because that's pretty much the only movie he does, <laughs> except for Ginger Dead Man, which is a tiny little gingerbread man instead of a doll. Uh, and Evil Bong, which is just a mistake. Evil Bong is still better. Uh, some Evil Bong movies are actually better than Ginger Dead Man movies, though. That's sad to say. I don't like either. I don't like, yeah, I'm not a big fan of either, but... Tourist Trap, I love Tourist Trap. Uh, Tourist Trap's a fantastic film. Uh, Chuck Connors plays a villain in Tourist Trap and does an amazing job. It creeps me out. I have the DVD edition of it because the Blu-ray actually had stuff taken out. Uh, that's a... Uh, he had a... Yeah, the... They actually have like a commentary, and you got so the, you're listening to the commentary, and the guy's commenting on stuff that's actually not in the film because the Blu-ray was a shorter version of the film. If you got the DVD of Tourist Trap, then you got the good one. So, uh, thumbs up. Did the DVD come with a commentary? Yep. Okay. Yeah, the blue. Oh no, st still good. <laughs> that's it. But uh, if you can get the DVD as well, there is like a uh, director hated the Blu-ray because he took stuff out. Uh, no, it wasn't. I don't think they knew at the time, guy. I basically, I think Charles Band is a bit of a sketchy character. I, I, I love his films. Some of the stuff he does is questionable. My movie should be arriving next week. Oh, okay, nurse. Savannah actually sent me something. Now tell me what it is. I got to open it up on air. So uh, you'll be here for that, and we'll be uh, we'll be doing that. Next movie. How much about Charles Band being a sketchy guy? But I do remember him having a stretch goal on his Kickstarter for. Uh... Papa Master Access Termination B Blade will be in the movie. Have you and heard that? And then immediately after hitting that stretch, I love goal, William Castle. Being like, well, we can't get Blade in the movie, so thanks for the extra money, but he's not going to be in the film. <laughs> well, one of the things that I'd heard with uh, Charles Band is that somebody who was a real fan of the Puppet Master series did a uh, did a doll for him, like, uh, and sent it to him, and. Uh, that doll, like he pretty much molded that doll and started selling it. Which doll is it? I'm not, I'm not sure. But someone, someone here might know. Because I know. How long does it take, usually take for DVDs, Blu-rays from Australia to Canada? Is it about two weeks? Uh, I, don't, I don't know, actually. I had a, I've only ever had one thing come from Australia, and it was like a surprise gift at the time. So I, I really, I'm really not sure. The only movie that I've ever had come from Australia is a movie called Body Double with Brian De Palma. I'm a huge Brian De Palma fan. And one of my viewers actually knew that and said that to me. So that was, that was actually really cool then. I would say that it's probably the Jester puppet that yes, he sells. I would say that, but the Jester puppet is too poorly made for me to think of <laughs> someone who has passed. No, I think it's probably one of the better ones. It's probably one of the better ones. This one, guys. I'm so excited to finally have this movie. I haven't seen this movie basically basically since the uh, the days of the hard box. Three, three or four movies. Oh, really? Yeah, so because it is farther away, so, you know. Australia's down under. What a horrible Australian accent. That is terrible. I apologize, Savannah, for my horrible Australian accent. Uh, FX is a great film. If you guys haven't seen this one, I really do recommend it. Brian Brown, Brian Dennehy. Uh, I, I think this is the one with Clifty Young in it, right? Do you remember that? I think that? so. Uh, never seen a Castle movie until I saw the old Dark House a few days ago. Did you like it? The whole Dark House. I thought was, I liked the whole Dark House, uh, and uh, I like William Castle. So there's indicators putting it some William Castle box sets. Indicator put it those hammer box sets out there. Oh, okay. But this is a great film, guys. If you haven't seen it, really. I do really strongly recommend it. It had a sequel that I liked as well, and had a, t a Canadian TV series that lasted for uh, two seasons. Really? Actually, it was pretty decent. Actually, I got the TV series too. That's not surprising. Well, a friend of mine actually gave it to me. Uh, next up is a really. Chuck Norris and Code of Silence. This is actually one of my favorite Chuck Norris films. Uh, Henry Silva is the bad guy in this one, and Henry Silva. A movie like this, an action movie, really depends on having a good bad guy. Uh, yeah, it's right up there like... Oh, that movie's in Have you seen FX? Did you like it? Uh, now, Code of Silence, I love. Uh, yeah, yeah, it depends on the bad guy. Like in, like in Invasion USA. Invasion USA had a really good bad guy, and it really helped it. The cover of yours looks different. 
I'm not sure if these, some of these have like, might have like dual covers. We'll check it out afterwards, right? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, Did you bring a knife back? James likes Code of Silence too. I, I kind of knew, I knew you would, James. This is a, it's a cool Chuck Norris one. I didn't bring a knife. These are really easy to open up. Okay. Uh, next up is a Fred Olin Ray film. And if you guys are fans of Fred Olin Ray, we've been only feeling in a few months. Oh, really? Cool. Brian Brown is like, Brian Brown's one of my favorite actors. Uh, there's a movie called Cocktail. And, uh, I might lose a bit of cred for this, but I really love the movie. I saw it in theater like four times when I was young. And I actually uh, spent time juggling bottles like Tom Cruise did in, in Cocktail. Good job. <laughs> hey, I, I was actually a pretty good ju bottle juggler. I once learned how to walk on a barrel uh, one summer just because I like Donkey Kong. <laughs> did you really? No. Yeah. We were down for real? <laughs> no, we were, we were down the coast and someone, like, there was a barrel at... Uh, my grandparents' house, so I just spent the entire summer learning how to walk on that barrel. Whoa. I've never it's a good thing you didn't... I could probably still do it. I just, I've never ran into a barrel in a while. I guess it's a good thing you didn't, like, really get into Grand Theft Auto. But, uh... <laughs> right around, look, oh, Rachel Ward. Oh, Rachel Ward. <laughs> Star Slammer. I couldn't resist this, guys. A women in prison <laughs> movie in space done by Fred Olin Wright. Wow. Star Slam. We are do totally watching this one, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Mimi watches all the cheesy movies. I have to, apparently. <laughs> you, you were raised on cheesy movies. I uh, was raised on cheesy movies. I'm so, sort of like... You want that one? Yeah, this, I'm excited, James, because I, I, you know, I'll be honest with you, I don't remember this movie. I don't know if I've ever seen this film. Uh, so I'm going in blind with this one. And I like Fred Olin Ray. But I had to grab this one. This movie I've ever bought had Rachel Ward in it. Oh, really? What's the, what's the movie? I remember her from... Uh, oh, I remember her mostly from, like, uh, from slasher movies. Like Night School. And, uh, of course, well, you know, uh, Against All Odds. But, uh... It says to you. Uh, if I get another copy of this one, I'll, I will definitely send you one. But this one... <laughs> Fred Olin Ray. Is that awesome? Is that so cool? She... How cheesy is that? It's got an auto, auto commentary for Fred as well. There's, these have some features on them, by the way. These aren't like the regular early keynotes with no features. Well, except for FX. I think that one's got just an interview with the director. So I got three more here. The ones I'm most excited about, along, well, along with Star Sams. I'm excited about all these films. But the last ones I'm showing you are the ones that left for, last for a reason. And that is exciting stuff, in my opinion. So I said space vampires, but... So some people would probably guess if they went through the Kino site what I meant when I said space vampires. I said I wanted to have like a kind of a triple feature with like Life Force and a couple other like space vampire movies that I had. A so weird subgenre. It is a decent subgenre though. Though in Life Force, Mathilda May is like Fortress. Would Good night, one. Would Night Trap count as a part of that subgenre? <sighs> Maybe. It's sort of a movie. It is. Queen of Blood. I've been wanting this one for a while, guys. We keep looking at this one. Uh, me and him keep looking at this one, and uh, we finally said we had to grab it. She's a school teacher in her bed, and her kids get kidnapped. I remember that one. I remember Fortress. I'm a, I'm a big Rachel Ward fan, actually. And if I showed you, you like Rachel Ward. Uh, look at this cover, guys. Isn't this cool and super cheesy? You have to see the vampire. Transfer's great on this one. I, I'm hoping I, because I, I see the vampire. <laughs> yeah. <go look. laughs> so like that's like the Bride of Dracula mixed with the Wicked Witch of the West. It's, it's different. It's Roger Corman actually. Now the other space vampire one is actually by, by a very good director. Not that Roger Crumb's not a good director, he is, but he just does different, like, cheaper stuff. Uh, and this one has some beautiful colors. Oh, yeah, Dan's Hopkins stars in there. Is It's got a big cast, I'm telling you, dude. John Saxon? John Saxon. He may be the star of it, actually. What the hell? Planet of the Vampires. This is a Mario Bava film. So, really good. Uh, great colors in this. Uh, really kind of cool, like, remember the X-Men movie that came out in the, uh, yeah, really? Uh, 
Remember the X-Men movie that came out in the uh, 90s and the 2000s? Is Look. Uh, Look at Suits. <laughs> I think I have your edges, James. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we did it like as a James, but it is kind of like a, as a, we wanted this as a double feature for ages, and we kept looking at it, and him kept saying, "We got to get that space vampire movie that Keenel has," and I'm like, "Which one?" Because he got more than one space vampire movie. She said, "There's more than one." So we, uh, I showed her the trailer for both, and she's like, uh, "I know." She said, "I know you, this is your order, but can we get the space vampire movies?" And I'm like, "Yes, we can get space vampire movies. I really want those as well." I had a commentary with Tim Lucas, I'm guessing. Yeah. And Trailers from Hell which is with Joe Dante. I love Trailers from Hell. Now, last but definitely not least is one that I've been wanting for ages. It's not horror, but it's definitely something that I think uh, belongs in, like, uh, if you're a fan of this type of stuff, definitely belongs in your collection. And I'm really, really excited about this one here. And it is The Adventures of Captain Marvel. Now, we know there's a new Shazam movie coming out soon, but Adventures of Captain Marvel was done in 19... 41, I think. 41, right? It says in the back. Yeah, 41. And it has Tom Tyler as the, uh, playing, uh, you know, the lead character of Captain Marvel. This is considered one of the best, if not the best, uh, serial ever made, and one of the best, most authentic depictions of, like, a superhero early on. Uh, Shazam! Right. Is it Captain Marvel family in it, or is it Captain Marvel? Uh, just Captain Marvel, but the uh, flying in this is actually before. really good, apparently. Uh, it's the, the special effects in this, for its sayers, are apparently phenomenal. And uh, he looks actually really good in the suit. Just look at that. He does. So you're... Thanks, James. I, I can thank my better half, too, because she helped me choose the uh, these ones here. So this is like Captain Marvel. Now, what's really cool about this, guys, what's really special about this one here is that... You want to hold that? Sure. Is that every... There's like, I think there's 12 chapters. And every chapter has a commentary by a different person. Uh, you've got uh, guys like uh, Jerry Beck, who you probably know because he does a lot of these kind of animation story in. We have like uh, Chris Eberly, Shane Kelly, Boyd Majors, Leonard Malton is on here, uh, Donnie Waddell, Tom Weaver, and each one. I, saw, I used to see it Saturday mornings, cinemas in the 70s. Wow, that's actually cool. I wish I would have seen this in the cinema. Each one takes on a dip. Guess who's not here tonight? Oh, who's not here? Polly, oh, Polly's not here. Polly must be working. I'm sure if if he's here, he'll, he'll come on. Captain Ma. Yeah, Captain Ma. <laughs> Captain Ma. But Captain Marvel, basically every one of these commentaries deals with a different subject matter. It may not actually deal with the uh, with the serial like chapter itself. It's actually going to deal with other things. It'll deal with uh, things like the uh, the legal battle between like uh, between DC and. Uh, and uh, you know, over the over with I think with Marvel and uh, and and there was Fawcett, someone else who had a over the Captain Marvel name. There was someone else too before, like this Captain Marvel that had it too. <laughs> Terrible character. He just like throws his body parts around. Yeah, I know exactly what. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's so every, each chapter and each serial deals with a, a very different like uh, one. Is that a Kitty Cat? Yeah. Which one? It is one of the twins. Oh. As uh, the Hubert or Bruno. So I'm going to open this one first. It's probably Hubert. That's Hubert. I see. These aren't too tired to come off. You know. So I think this one has... Oh, it has a booklet. That's nice. Looks okay, nice. so guys, nice this one has like a... Uh, oh, no, it's got a booklet and a catalog. So we got a booklet here. I like the back of the booklet. The Eagles and Green. And look at the back. If you're getting excited about the David Sandberg like Shazam movie that's coming out, pictures... <laughs> Uh, look at this, guys. So, yeah. You know, I don't like. I bet this won't be on the uh, DC's new streaming service. <laughs> I don't. I, I not it should that, be. Not saying that I think it's going to be a bad streaming service. Just I don't think it'll be on there. Well, I love the way that looks, and just so you know, there is an alternate cover. So I'll actually pop this out for you. Oh, I like the alternate cover. So there's the alternate cover, guys. Really cool. Uh, so excited about this one. Loved, I didn't know there was going to be a book. This is a really good booklet, too. 
There's even like a, a little Kino like uh, catalog in with this one. I'm actually really excited about this like about this uh, these uh, Kino releases that I uh, that I picked up this time. So I'm gonna look at all of them to show you guys if there's any ultra cover or artwork or any of that stuff. So you guys can keep talking to me by the way. Because I know you're not quiet people. And I like that. We also used to see oh, the 40s Buck Rogers with Buster Crab. It's Buster Crab, right? Within the 40s Buck Rogers? I'm pretty sure it is. You got a question? Ask, ask away. I love your questions. The last time you asked me a question, I ended up getting on my Degrassi sets. Also a Degrassi fan right there. Yeah, until JT died in the but next generation. Original Degrassi, though. Well, the original Degrassi's good, too. I'm just saying. Oh, it's sweet. JT died, and it's not, I'm not a fan of that. So, let's find the vampires. bars. What's really cool is there's a ton of cover art for this on, the, on here. So, we, wow. That's a lot of cover art. That's really cool, actually, the way they did this. So, let's show you this. This is what Planet of the Vampires looks like. I like when Drake got shot. Is that because you're not a fan of a certain, of like the, uh, of the artist? No, that actually was a good storyline though. Degrassi. This is the Degrassi Savannah that you haven't seen yet. This is the, uh, the newer Degrassi. That's, I liked Wheelchair Drake. He was cool. He was my, like, he was my favorite. Well, no, he wasn't. JT was my favorite. And then he got stabbed at a party. And he died. That was a shocking episode. It sure was. Nobody expected that. So it does it does have fantastic artwork. It's the same with the uh, I think I'm gonna switch over, James, the uh, the Captain Marvel artwork because it's really nice. So let's see. Just... Yeah, the other ones. So Queen of Blood God, doesn't have any like art. this is an earlier Kino, and the earlier Kinos didn't have any like other artwork, so maybe it's an artistic choice. Make your, own cover. Make your own cover. Yeah, that's it. Make your own cover. I almost went for Bava, but instead bought the Noir box. The Noir box is incredible. I got it, and uh, I love the Noir box set. You, you know, did not make a bad choice with that Noir box set. There's some cool stuff in there, and uh, I can't remember which ones I watched in it, but I remember there's a really, really good one that I uh, that I like. There's a couple. Oh, there's, I liked all of them, but there's one in particular that stood out. Becoming like the yeah. Garbage lady. So, Star Slammers, unfortunately, and another one that doesn't have like a, a, a alternate artwork, but it does have this here kind of like cool, like a uh, catalog. So you can see like different Kino films. I got like a few of these. Like I got Candy, I've got like The Party. I should get Modesty Blaze too down the road. Slowly getting these. I got FX. I need FX too. This is FX too, guys. A gift card for what? I've, I've just got like a prepaid Visa card that I haven't used from like my birthday. And nice. I've been thinking of what to use it for. Save it, you never know what's going to be good well, for. I mean, I can't use it for anything like legitimate other than like fun stuff. <laughs> legitimate. Because it's like a prepaid, like whatever. <laughs> but, I don't know, maybe I'll... I'm, I'm up in the air between a K-pop album and maybe one of the Shout Factory's Sentai ones. <coughs> Again, I regular. Think I have with me. You don't? I don't think I have my Sentai's with me because, like, I didn't see. It. I packed a lot of DVDs, but I don't like. You know, Did you pack the stuff that I gave you, like the deep red and stuff like that? I deep reds in there, yeah. <coughs> don't you mind? Can you give me a movie because none will send it to Australia? What is the movie? Are you looking for the the, the Criterion one? Email me about that, okay? Sorry. It's... Uh, Is that how all these discs are? Yeah. The Kino Studio Classics Collection have, like, a uniform, like, look to them. Some... Eh, I like that, actually. It's... I guess it's okay. I like disc art, though. FX. Also, wouldn't it be, like, a cool disc if you had, like... Half the eye. That'd be cool. Yeah, but like, Kino's you know, kind of go with like their, uh, everyone looks, you know. Yeah, yeah, I guess. It's kind of like you're supposed to know when you got a Kino disc. 
Oh, yes, we're back to alternate artwork again. I love that. Which one's this one? Seven. Oh. So, yeah. Box? Oh, this is cool. That's nice. That's actually better. This is better artwork. But it's having a new Degrassi's. It actually, it's really good. Uh, someone was giving away spoilers, though. <laughs> but it's been a few years, so I guess. Been been... This is a zombie episode. See, this is my favorite Will Smith right here. <laughs> William Smith. That's awesome. Uh, Great the Vampire is a great movie. If you really want to see William Smith, and a really good one. Uh, my dad's a huge William Smith fan. Oh, okay. I'm not surprised, actually. But no. So, well, the laughing policeman of alternate art. But we're going to check anyway. And if you guys have any questions to ask, ask away. Fear the Barnes & Noble aren't long for the world. Oh, I hope so. I hope, I hope they are, actually. When I saw that Barnes & Noble, I thought it was a Fincher 7. No, it's a different 7 altogether. A very different 7. Uh, Andy Sedaris, who uh, did movies with his uh, wife. Unfortunately, Andy Sedaris passed away. We should take a moment to acknowledge that Steve Ditko actually passed away tonight. Did at he? the age of 90. Hey, I forgot to tell you, actually. What? Uh, Steve Ditko, of course, was one of the... Uh, one of the guys that was big in like the creation of like Spider-Man, his his work on Spider-Man was amazing, and he did so much other uh, so much amazing work. Yeah, so we were, I was really really surprised to hear that he that he passed on. My uh, my cousin actually who just uh, who's who's staying here right now, uh, is visiting here now. He uh, texted me just before I came downstairs to let me know that a Ditko had passed away. Oh, this is a cool unique cover, aren't? Huh? I prefer the this one with the one on the inside. To be honest, I was hoping that there would be alternate cover art because I'm not a huge fan of the one that like it comes with. It's very gritty. It's very cool and gritty. It's very isn't gritty. It? I like that dark and green <coughs> one, that like neo noir cover in there. Now I know these are gonna have different art. What silent movies do I have? Oh, I got a lot. Actually, tell you what. Uh, in a minute, I'm uh gonna. Pick out a couple of my silent ones, and I'll show you guys. I always do that. Criterion movie with Virgin, Su Virgin Suicides. That is a really good movie. That's uh, Coppola, right? Director that one. Email me, and I shall work on that for you, okay? <clears throat> Even if it, is, it does have James Woods. No, he's a good actor. Crazy guy, good actor. The dog father. And let's look at the inside. As always, what's really cool, and I'll see that's Keenan Lover animation. Oh, cool. Oh, that's cool. So this is like the, a little bit different. The, but what's really cool is they'll have pencil artwork for the uh, inside covers. Every one of the, of the Depada Freeling animation sets all have pencil artwork on the inside. And as an animation fan, that's huge for me. One more. Gotcha, gotcha. You guys ready for Mr. Jaw? So, Mr. Jaw is actually two discs. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, one of the bigger ones. And uh, you can see there is like a pencil drawing from Mr. Jaw as well, which I really like. I like the fact that they did that. There's a. Actually, this is a pretty cool set. So, that is my entire Kino haul. So, somebody asked about my silent films. So, because I have Kino, I do have a few silent films. I want the Sternberg Dietrich Criterion set, but even on sales price. I know you feel there's a few that I want. Uh, the uh, American Lost and Found is one that I want, but it's also again pretty pricey. I'll be right back. So you can actually put that up and stuff. Yeah, what am I going to say? <laughs> I got nothing to say about silent films. I'll just watch and see if anybody says anything. I'll read it out to you. Just a couple of silent films to show you guys that I that I do have. Usually, Savannah asks me a question about something, and I and I end up pulling something out of my collection. And one that I was going to show you guys a while back, and I know it's here, was a uh, 
Oh, it's a prom night one, which is over here somewhere. Oh, hold on. All right, oh, careful. During my one on Canadian editions, I kept saying I was going to share my prominent collection set, and it has the four prominent films, and that is this one right here, prominent the collection. Now, the one that I got for my cousin Raj actually has the four films plus the remake, and it has a much better cover. Actually, it has the original prominent cover with the dark face. And the... You're welcome. And this has all the prominent movies in the Hard to get in though. Yeah, that's a weird way they did the test. I know. I hate the way they did the test. Yeah, I don't like that. Be careful. Yeah, that's that one. And it comes out like this. And like this. It's not as well done as the ginger snaps one. So, silent. I don't have a lot of silent films. I got a few over there. But uh I have FW Murnau's Nasferatu. I got a, some Master Cinema as well. Uh, but I'm just brought over to Kino because I'm in Kino. Yeah. Hey, Polly, welcome. And this is like the, uh, I think it's the two disc edition. Oh. So it's like a really good documentary, 15 minute documentary on F.W. Murnau's early career in the making of Nasferatu. Uh, there's some like stuff from some of his early films. Mm. Leave for sure, but I was hungry for McDonald's. Nice. That's a cool promise. It's pretty cool, but James actually, the one that I got my cousin's cooler. It looks cooler. Because uh, that's the original problem night like cover on it. Now this is actually a really cool set. It's, it's true, she actually was just saying that you weren't here. The American Silent Horror Collection. This is a really nice one from Kino. Uh, do really like this movie. And we got like some classics here. The Man Who Laughs, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Oh, the Man Who Laughs. Cat in the Canary. The penalty, and there's a bonus DVD which is really good. We we gotta watch this one. It's a really great documentary called uh, Kingdom of Shadows, and it is a fantastic. It was a movie with the guy and the cover and the axe on the cover. The guy and the axe on the cover. Hmm. hmm. Which axe one? There's a lot of axe movies. Am I? Same many three times fast you appear. <laughs> oh, am, am am I am I married or you know, you're not married yet? <laughs> no. no. Uh, on the cover, oh, and, oh, this is like actually, uh, it's 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 the penalty. See, this is a uh, Lon Chaney, and he's uh, kind of like I think he's pretending to be like uh, he's uh, like a mean like he's he's pretending to be handicapped or something like that in the film. But he's a really mean character, really like an evil character. Uh, it's Lon Chaney, and it's like I can't remember her name right now. So, I'll show you guys right now the. See, pounding right there. Oh, there's supplemental features on that. Nice. Oh, there's a, a complete 1914 short. How come the supplemental features? Kino are pretty. I when they started. Kind of is almost forgotten. That is a that is a shame, actually. Anybody that likes the Joker won't won't, won't ever never forget Conrad White. It's Cat in the Canary. It's one of the three of them I want to see that movie. Actually. The Joker. Yeah. It's a classic film though. It's really good. Well, yeah. Doctor and Mister Hyde, the original John Barrymore version. They also have like a cartoon one in there called well, it's just short like a not cartoon Stan Laurel, and uh, it's like called Doctor Pickle and Mister Pride. Oh, no. Not married. No, no, I'm super What's my not married. favorite Lon Chaney film? I don't know. Uh, Phantom of the Opera? Uh, but, uh, oh, London After Midnight really creeps me out. And uh, the makeup is horrifying. Speaking of horrifyingly like, creepy makeup. And these are all great features on them, i got to say. i got to rewatch some of these. All those great supplemental features. Supplemental features. Supple what supplementary. Is it's not obnoxious to say it's supplemental. It's a really obnoxious name. <laughs> you know, hey, look, if you want to see obnoxious, you like, start, start looking at the like, twilight time when they're like being interviewed. Apparently, I heard one interview, but apparently James heard a few interviews from the guy from twilight time, and he's really like, you know, 
I soon see like physical media going out and not being around anymore. And only, oh my God. And I get those kind of books that I tear the cover off. <laughs> that, that, that place is closed down. I'm right. not surprised. Yeah. So we're originally from Newfoundland. And we went to a bookstore when we moved to, uh, to St. John's. And there's like a lot of like Newfoundland jokes type of thing. And uh, kind of like the... It was kind of like the basically the stupid Newfoundland or like the... Or the Newfoundland is always trying to like like con people out of money and stuff like that, basically. Probably something about drinking. Yeah, usually about drinking and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So what happened is that uh, an actual Newfoundland writer decided to make like a bunch of books called Newf Newf Joke Books. Because, you know, kind of like if we're going to be, ma if the, you know, if we're going to be made fun of anyway, let's make fun of ourselves. So let's have fun with it. Uh, Newfoundland is known for like pretty self-effacing humor. It's kind of stuff, you know, we really do that. And political humor, too. We do a lot of that. Uh, but uh, so we went to the store and this was like this bookstore. Borders bookstores. Do they have those in Canada? We have like Kohl's here. And unfortunately, we would have had Barnes & Noble here as well, but Kohl's stopped Barnes & Noble from coming in, which really, really uh, peeved me off. But yeah, we got to the bookstore, and uh, I'm like, you know, I go, I'm going to, I'm going to ask, because from my, my childhood, I remember the Newfie Joke books, and my mom knew the guy that like, I wrote the books. So I said, you know, Kohl's. Yeah, uh, no, K uh, C O L E S. Uh, it's like it's much like it's coals or chapters as it's sometimes yeah, called they're here. The same. They're the same, but they're like uh, the kind of like a. Uh, chapters shoot. are the bigger ones. Yeah, chapters is bigger. Coals would be like the smaller ones. I don't know why it works that way, but it does. The same store. Yeah, it's pretty much. The same. But anyway, so we got in there. So I said, so do you have any of those Newfie like Newfie joke books? You know, because you know it's my my childhood. I remember those books. There's one Barnes and Noble in Vancouver. Oh. But that's a long ways away for me, unfortunately. It would be easier for me to go to drive to Maine than be to drive to Vancouver. And uh, they said, uh, and he was like, I'm sorry, but we don't carry Newfie joke books here. He said, if I had, if somebody came into my store and, give, and gave me a Newfie joke book, I would tear the cover off of it and throw it in the garbage. What do I think of Scream's recent announcements? Oh, there's some good, good announcements. Creepshow is coming out. The Wait, original. Really? Oh yes, and an awesome collector's edition. I am so stoked for that. I have no that. idea where my my Tales from Dark Side is. And my, there's like a bunch of stuff that I like could not fit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds like it'd be fun at a party. His store closed down. I'm shocked that uh that that guy. No, he was like a real like uppity like kind of douchey type of guy I normally don't say that type of stuff but he was he was really douchey yeah he was super yeah. douchey uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't think I ever went in there like again afterwards no I think There's I no walked reason for me to go in there. yeah and he had Robotech comics I wanted but he I was not going to buy them from him yeah he had a couple comics but there was nothing I wanted there was no like characters I followed or anything and they were, they were like in horrible condition too yeah they were really bad condition uh, but I was like so one of the Robotech comics I'm a huge Robotech fan uh, anybody else here like any like anime or Sentai or any of that type of stuff? So if Sentai you do, Sentai is my thing. That's your Sentai thing. and Kamen Rider is my thing. <laughs> I'm <laughs> excited tonight because there's news on that. So. But uh, yeah. So that's you know that's a couple of silent movies I got. I got like a Lon Chaney collection as well that I got from like uh, Turner Classic Movies. They're probably in bad condition because he keeps tearing the cover off them. That's. <laughs> Uh, like the Robotech, I, I, he had some Robotech comics there, and, but they were like really badly done. Do I like old school Pokemon? I am old school Pokemon, but I'm guessing he's asking you. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. Top three favorite documentaries of all time. For me? For uh, both of us. For the documentaries, this is sort of out there uh, question. I don't know. Um, I love the Friday the 13th, Crystal Lake Memories. Yeah, that one's really good. Uh... I like, can't remember if the Nightmare Nature one's really good. It is really good, actually. It's, it is. It's if you super haven't long. seen Jodorowsky's Dune, I recommend it. Uh, that's a really great documentary. Uh, I swear I watched a documentary recently or something. Jodorowsky's Dune? No, it's not that. It's really good. If you haven't seen that you one, guys, what? I really recommend it. Room uh, 237? 237. Is I got that. Absolutely hilarious. Grizzly Man. Yeah, Grizzly Man was done by uh, Never Sleep Again. That's the one. Never Sleep Again is amazing. I don't know if I, I just sent away for it. That it time. is insanely long. HMV. It's, oh, it's, I got it here. Yeah, I think I got up to the 
fifth movie. Oh, and then, and Friday the 13th is the Sandy Long Gun. What? Friday the 13th is the Sandy You haven't seen Friday the 13th one? Haven't I? No, I, I think swore, because Tom there's... Savini's walking around. No, no, that's, with... a, that's a short one. That's the that's short called his, one. That's called his name is Jason. See, there's a long Yeah, one. okay, I've seen his name is Jason. I haven't seen the other No, one. there's a really big one. Hey, Tim, welcome. I just did my my uh, my uh, keynotes. I picked up some great stuff, some Space Vampire stuff. And uh, <clears throat> FX, Code of Silence, picked up some animation. Uh, and uh, I'm really excited. We're going to watch some keynote over this, over this week. We're going to watch... What are we going to watch? What's the movie I said earlier we're going to watch? Something about... Blood Harvest. Yeah. We're watching oh, Blood Harvest. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm blurry tonight. Are you sure you haven't been drinking, Tim? Are you sure? Act of Killing is a very disturbing documentary. I don't think I've... I don't know if I've seen that one or not. i got to check. Um, I watch a lot of documentaries. I actually... We'll, we'll do a documentary. Like, I'll do my entire documentary series. Toys Us is a good documentary series. Toys of Us was a fantastic yeah, documentary. Yeah, that's really great. It's a documentary series about the toys that we all love. That's not, no, that's not going to in my head for a while. Oh, my God, yes. And if you haven't seen it, if you got Shutter Guys, uh, there is a really good uh, comic history documentary done by Robert Kirkman. And it is uh, incredible, especially now that Steve Ditko passed away today. I, I do recommend you check that out. Showa? Oh, Showa. What, do you, what, what about Showa? That got the interest. Yeah. Because I, like, show is uh, an era uh, when it comes to Common Rider specifically. So I'm curious as to what the show <laughs> reference here is. Got a question again. Oh, okay. Ten hours long and hard, hard to watch. Hmm. Is it like, is can you even condition thing? Ask away, Shannon. Because <laughs> I, got, I got some here that are pretty long. That I, I, I think that one's 13 hours. Shows about the Holocaust, yeah. That is a hard watch. It will be a hard watch. I'd probably watch it, but it'd be a hard watch. We'll be like, that's like the day after it's coming out, and I saw that when I was young. The director died. Oh. Wow. God, that's just finally on. But the, the. But the, yeah, but uh, favorite brand documentary are the brutally, uh, really honest ones. Like Room 237. What are some of your Blu-rays that you're planning to get that are coming out later this month or year? <coughs> I try to keep that as a surprise, though I will let you know that I do plan on getting the third volume of the Hammer set that's coming from Indicator. Uh, and it's uh, got like Terror of the Tongues on it, where uh, Christopher Lee plays like an evil Asian character. Remember, it's a different time period, so we'll just, we'll just say that. Uh, but it's uh, those are really cool. There's some really cool stuff coming out. Like it's kind of an adventure type set, uh, more so than some of the other ones. But it's a really a uh, really fun set. I might get Jetman. Jetman. I might get uh, Chosu Sentai Jetman. They have some really good stuff. Oh, by the way, I picked up Reanimator from Arrow. I showed you guys, right? So I was so excited. I was getting ready to watch Reanimator on Blu-ray, the Arrow edition, for the first time. There was two editions there. One went to store. For thirty something bucks, thirty four bucks, Pet Cemetery documentary is on. Is it on Shutter? Really? I gotta watch that. We gotta watch that. Uh, <clears throat> Catch on demand last night's fantastic. Oh, anyway, so there was a regular one that was thirty four bucks, and there was a steel book, really shiny looking, good looking steel book, FYE exclusive, for like around forty bucks. But I had some like extra money on me from uh, that I'd saved, so this was a big deal. This was gonna be a part of my Father's Day present. And I picked it up, and I was so excited to watch, like, Reanimator. I, I had the image one, but I wanted the new kind of, like, release, because there was, like, it's a two-disc edition, and it had, like, a, a second disc with the integral edition with this, like, really cool different cut of Reanimator, and there's going to be, like, a, a, a special feature with, like, uh, Jeffrey Coombs actually reading the original story about an hour and a half long. So that's going to be really, really cool. So I got upstairs, and I opened up my, my disc for... Uh, for like the for the reanimator one, and the steel book only has the first disc. Yeah, so the more expensive one from Fye literally cheats you out of a disc. That sucks. Uh, so I literally I did not have the the edition that I wanted to watch. I already got the unrated edition. It is it is ridiculous, Polly. Uh, I was. Excited to watch the Integral Edition, but that's nowhere to be seen because the 
they actually cheat you. I can't return it. See, uh, that, that's four hours away. And now, see, they didn't steal from the inventory. That's actually how they put it out to you. They actually did it. And I did check afterwards. Halifax, four hours away. Yeah, button Halifax. Uh, now, so it actually is the way that it came. I don't know. Uh, look into it. Like, look for a, a review online before you before you pick up, like, any other stuff like that. Because what they did is that they put in a nice... It is a nice-looking steelbook. I'm not going to lie about that. But uh, they just put it the regular, like, okay, here's the unrated disc. Put it in there, and that was it. I don't know. This is my... Probably this is my first FYE exclusive. Where I live in Canada, I don't normally get FYE. So I was really excited to find out that. You can find something to enjoy about most movies, but are, there's some that you would never want to watch again. Speaking of Tom Savini, uh, me and Mimi watched a, uh, an anthology film, and uh, it kind of like hollowed Tom Savini. He was only at the, at the very end of it, and I, I feel really bad that he was actually in this film. That's the one that ends, and it's literally a Tales from the Dark Side episode. Pretty much, yeah, but it's really bad. It's like and when I say it's literally a Tales from the Dark Side episode, I don't mean it's kind of like a Tales from the Dark Side episode. Like it's still from. I mean it's yeah. directly the Tales from the Dark Side episode. But it's horrible. It's a really, really bad. I can't even remember the name of it. Do you remember the name of it? No. It was an anthology film. It had Tom Savini in it. It wasn't very good. Anthology films, by the way, are my favorite genre of horror. Yeah. Needless to say, I had something to do with that. I love Kevin Smith, but I'll never watch Yoga Hosers again. Yoga Hosers was Kevin Smith's love letter to. Uh, to Full Moon, but I don't think, but unfortunately it seemed like a love letter to later Bad Full Moon as opposed to the earlier Good Full Moon. Um, Isn't he doing another one where, well, like I was, about a I'm, moose or something? What? Probably. Phantom find, yeah. find of Space you're struggling to get through? Last video showed us a movie, The Hills of Ice 3, but you said, oh, it's, it's a, uh, I gotta watch that yet. So, so, is the Hills of Ice Steel book the same way? So James is in the States. He buys a lot, James buys a lot of stuff. He's got a great collection. Mm -hmm. How long are your kids staying in Nova Scotia with you? So you are here for a month. I'm here for a month. And then I'm still gonna be in Nova she's Scotia. moving to uh, she's moving to Halifax. So still be in Nova Scotia when we're closer. To me, thank God. And uh, you make one bit of moose like a Canadian tribute to jazz. Oh yeah. Okay. I believe he's killing off. James Holly wants to know your favorite anthology is. My favorite anthology is. It's really hard because there's a lot of really good ones. It's probably Creep Show Two. Are you sure it's not Creep Show Three? No. It's, <laughs> Nobody's it's a Creep Show Three. I don't want to say Creep Show Two because it's it's pretty well known, but it is really good. I like and first. And I I absolutely love like the Creep Show. <laughs> no, and we're not a separate country. We're we're very much closer. To uh to the uh, to the U.S. though, mm -hmm. uh, I I I really love Creepshow. Do you like Creepshow better than the Amicus ones? Better than like well, than like Tales from the Crypt? And there's just some of those really cool ones. Okay, I have Tales from the Crypt and that in my bag. I have like, but I don't know if it's the House of Drip Blood is also really good. <clears throat> it's just here's the thing. Like, I also like factor in the fact that like Tales from the Dark Side is just Creep Show the series. They didn't have the rights <laughs> My, to the name. Yeah. So they just did Tales from the Dark Side. Instead and of called Tales from the Five Crypt. Seasons. It's and really then they good. They did a third Creep Show movie called, called Tales from the Dark Side the movie. Which is really good, Which are the only Tales from the Dark Side movies. Or, sorry, mm -hmm. for the only Creep Show movies. One, two, it is. and Tales from the Dark Side. And then they, they lost, like, they didn't have the rights to go further. With Tales from the Dark Side, That's they me. continued to want to make the series, so they made another <laughs> show called Monsters, and that ran for five seasons. <laughs> so bad I wanted to punch the director and actors, even though they've probably been dead. <laughs> I like that reaction. Uh, another horrible movie that I couldn't get through, uh, it, it took me a while to get through, was Creepshow 3, which was actually made by a different company. They actually just stole the rights to the Creepshow. Monsters and Tales from Dark Side Tim are two of my favorites and two of her favorites as well. I own them all on DVD and they're somewhere. They're not <laughs> here with me because I packed a lot of stuff. I can't, but be, I can't believe you put There monsters. is so much stuff that I have. I have an entire suitcase that's just full of Kamen Rider and Super Sentai stuff. Oh, Supergirl's coming out on blue. Yeah, I forgot about that. I gotta get that. Supergirl the Show, the new one? No, no, the movie. Oh. The okay. cheesy movie. But it's, it's cheesy fun though. It's not exactly the most exciting thing. It's it's fun. It's like I saw it's, it, five. I'm not into it. 
The, no, no, that would mean the, the TV show. No, not like on the TV show. I mean, yeah. Do I get T Sam? Yes, we do, but sometimes some of the movies get blocked. Freddy's Nightmares was hilarious. I love Freddy's Nightmares. I wish again. Do I have Yo Girls on Blu-ray? It's still so scared. I'm not watch it. <laughs> it's it is pretty. I, I, I didn't like Tosca. I can't like get through. Oh, Creepshow too. James is favorite too. Creepshow two is amazing, and I just. God, what are the stories in Creepshow two again? It's. There's an uh, old wooden head. Uh, old the, wooden head. The, the tar. It's the one. The raft. The raft. And the raft is a really good story. The one I quoted it all the time. The third one is the. Ro- the hitchhiker, hitchhiker one. Hitchhiker one. Thanks for the ride, lady. That I one. love that one. I, I, I don't know. I couldn't get into the hitchhiker one. I like that one a lot, even though it's weird, and I guess he licks her to death at the end because he's completely dead. But like, remember the ones from the first movie? Do you remember them as well? I love the ones from the first movie. I like the ones we from got, the first like, movie. I just don't remember them as well as the second one. Oh, Mimi. Oh, yeah, hey. Also. <laughs> okay. Pinky. Let's go. I've gotten that a bit. Uh, but uh, in, in the first movie, there is the crate, which is amazing. The crate's good. There is also their, uh, what's the name of it again? Uh, the, oh, Father's Day. Where's my cake? cake? I want my cake. It's re- with the, like Father's Day. It's really this will tide you over. Tay dancing. Yeah, yeah. I can hold my breath for a very long time. That makes the brain. Old Chief Wooden Head is really good. And uh, there is of my course the the cockroach one, which really bothers me because I'm mean, I like I don't like my insects. My favorite is the raft of all the stories from them. The raft's I, a great story. I love the raft. I do like Old Chief Wooden Head. That doesn't that have like uh, that actor that I really like. Probably, I think I know. Him. The crate from the first one is your one is your is your favorite from the first. I like the crate. It's got Hale Holbrook in it. I, Adrian Barbeau plays the evil, like, shrewish wife. And she's, you just want to see her get killed. It's just so well done. Got the Tasmanian yeah, devil. Like, it's, like, really cool. Uh, that's one of uh, Tom Savini's favorite, like, things that he ever did was that, uh, was the creature from the, from the crate, actually. Once again, if you like those movies, just watch Tale from the Dark Side. It's a show <laughs> that is the exact, it's just if it was a show. Like, it's in the exact same vein. Same people are working on it. it it's, it's a good... It's, so it has some bad good. episodes, but it has some... Oh, it has some bad episodes, but... Like, oh, oh, that's some really good ones. Anything that goes on like that... So Lucy, one of those episodes? What? Lucy? Is that the one with the, the creature and the wall type thing? Lucy's the name of the creature. Yeah. They're on Netflix as well. Wait, what? What are they? Uh, Paulie said they're on Netflix. The, uh, so I'm guessing that the... the are they really? Could be American. Just American. tell it to call you Billy. Yeah. <clears throat> I think great some, lines by the way great quotable of, lines in the creep show films I think one of the freakiest stories I've ever seen uh, Tales from the Dark Side I don't remember what the name of the episode is but there's an episode where there's this little girl oh that is so sc- sc- freaked out freaky. is that the one who sees death yes and she sees death and like I don't really care if I'm spoiling about this because it's like one episode in the middle of like five seasons <laughs> technically ten if you count monster. Uh, she like starts waving to like she people. waves to people and they die and yeah. she has no control over it she just has to uh, and she sees their death and at the end and she's she tossed her older sister everything she waved to her husband to their parents well she's no she's, she's not their, her older sister takes that way she well, says yeah. goodbye and they, yeah she says goodbye and they die yeah. <clears throat> says goodbye you see, there's a scene like at the end where she looks in the mirror and you're seeing, like, in the mirror, you're seeing water go up over her head because they're going to go swimming. And you can see that the older sister is filling, uh, like, her floaty with rocks. And Can't. she's just waving to herself in the mirror while the water raises. And it's, like, freaky as hell. Yeah, it's it, pretty like, dark. I don't remember when I watched that. I think, like, I woke up and, like, Wes wasn't, like, it was the day Wes had off school. And I was like, let's watch a bunch of Tales from the Dark Side. And that episode came out. Like, That's, that. like, really dark. <clears throat> so, but, yeah, that was... Name for both. Night Owl and Pinky. That, that sounds like a really... Uh, that's going to be a cool comic book, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Night Owl and well, Pinky. I mean, Night Owl is a comic book character. From, you mean, are you talking about Watchmen? Yeah, of course. Like a young Allison Sweeney was in that episode. Was it really? Yeah, I think it was, actually. Uh, Scream Factory. Oh, I would love to see Freddy's Nightmares. That is one I would buy. Do I have Knight Rider complete series on Blu-ray or DVD? I got the first... I got a couple... A season or two of Knight Rider, but I need to have the first one. 
Pinky, what are we going to do tonight, Pinky? <laughs> Try to take over the world. Same thing we do every night. Bro. Try to take over the world. You gotta like snarf or something like that, don't you? I don't know how to do that. I can't do a pinky mm. voice. Who's somebody I know did a pinky voice? Might have been Hind. She does a lot of those things. Yeah, she, she does a lot of that stuff. Uh, she's a huge animation freak. Uh, I love animation. My favorite of those animations was Freakazoid. Really? Yeah, I really like Freakazoid. Freakazoid was okay. It's based off of the Creeper, and I love the Creeper. So makes sense. I remember we got you the Creeper like book for uh, for, for uh, your birthday when you yeah, it's on my bed. It's on my bed at uh, back in St. John's. You left it. I don't have any room. Do you have... <laughs> you felt like... I have, like, so... Hey, Ben. You know, like, that the big suitcase, the heaviest suitcase, just... Oh. It has, like, a little bit of clothes and just all of my common Rider and other stuff. You know how heavy the Saba Saber is? It's got uh, metal on it. It's got, like, full real metal on it. I know, I know how heavy that suitcase is. Holy crap, man. It's really heavy. It's not making noises anymore, which kind of alarms me, because I hope nothing's broken. But I think it's just everything's in a perfect place right now, where it's not just screaming Japanese words all the time. <laughs> which is what it did when I got it on, like, before I got it onto the bus. I was just bringing it down the stairs, and it was, like, screaming Japanese words. Oh, well. He ain't gonna be looking for batteries, <laughs> Chris. Uh, but I guess this is our, uh, this is our stream for tonight. We've yeah. been here... Just over an hour? Am I going to get the Knight of the Demon Steelbook and Figure? I have the Knight of the Demons edition already. Uh, I, after the Steelbook fiasco that I just had with the Arrow one, I'm not sure. Uh, I do love that figure, though. I do, I do like Amelia Kincaid. And uh, I want to thank you both for joining us here. Uh, Mimi's here for the month, so I'm hoping to get you on for, for a nice few of, of these. Oh, I'll be on. For the, the streams. Wes will be on as well. And... Uh, have a great night, guys, and we are, well, I don't know if we're going to watch anything tonight, because we got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. Yeah, we got stuff to do tomorrow, it's like 2 o'clock. But so we'll maybe watch Shutter or something like that, one of those, and one of those like comic book documentaries. Man. And, uh, just... Evening. Arrivederci.